Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ English. Did you hear about the latest initiative taken by Google? Google has announced an ambitious long-term research initiative under which objective will be to deploy solar-powered data centers in the space. Yes, sounds shocking. Google believes that now having data centers on the earth is expensive. It needs much more dependence on fossil fuel. So therefore, to achieve more solarization, to utilize more solar energy and to make it more efficient, now it is planning to deploy many solar-powered data centers in the outer space. This program shall be known as Project Suncatcher. Although it has been in the news in the past few months, it's not a new development as such. But today, Google commits that yes, the plan will be implemented really soon and research is already underway. Perhaps by 2027, we shall see such data centers fully operational. But if you look at the topic from a GS paper, UPSC GS paper 3 perspective, it also somewhere relates to GS paper 4 because it is about certain basic ethics. It is about Outer Space Treaty 1967 that also comes under question here. Whether a country, any given organization, do they have the right to use for private purposes celestial bodies in the outer space? That's the raging question right now. Now quickly let's have a look at exactly what is the Google saying and what will happen with regards to data center in the outer space. Now, the Google has announced this ambitious plan. It's a research program which is now investigating at all possible, all possible chances of deploying solar powered data centers in the space itself. This was revealed by the CEO of Google, Mr. Sundar Pichai. He also says, as I mentioned to you, that the project may be operational. The project may be formally launched just by 2027. What an ambitious announcement. Quite an important topic for science and technology, GS Paper 3. And now this initiative also shows how the global tech giants, not just Google, in fact, there are many more companies who have hinted at the same. One the hint came from none other than Elon Musk. Then it also came from a company called NVIDIA. Today, Google also says that many more companies are showing interest in shifting their data intensive infrastructure. Infrastructures that deal with heavy amount of data and machine learning. All that will be shifted beyond Earth. That is, it will not be now terrestrial. It will now be moved to different bodies or different regions in the space because the demand is increasing in the domain of artificial intelligence computing. That needs more energy. It needs much bigger infrastructure for today. Now here in the picture, you can also have a look at a small AI center. That is, that shall look like something that Google is planning to create now in the space. Now this project, which is now being called as Suncatcher, the project Suncatcher, the name itself highlights, it projects to utilize a lot of solar energy, high intensity of solar energy. It focuses on building satellite-based data center prototype powered by solar energy. Now, solar energy was in the news recently. As we were talking about ISA, International Solar Alliance, that was created by India and France, headquartered in Gurugram back in 2015 a project where various sunshine countries today talk about accelerating the production and sharing of solar energy. And then recently we spoke about PM Kusum also, how the government of India is now helping many countries from Africa in solarizing their irrigation in agriculture sector. At the same time, we also looked at which was the latest country which has now joined the International Solar Alliance. Quickly let me know if you know the answer. Now, talking back about solar energy, it also means India's dependence on rare earth material shall also increase because ultimately you do need rare earth material to produce photovoltaic battery. That's the solar cell battery and that's also the reason why India is showing a keen interest in its relationship with Ethiopia. It was in the news today. So also remember that as we discuss about Google's mega plan. Now, these satellites that Google is planning to use will be equipped with latest modern infrastructure like Google's tensor processing units, specialized chips designed for large-scale machine learning tasks. 
They will also be equipped with optical laser links between satellite to enable super high speed, real time based communication, allowing them to work collectively as a distributed computer network. At the same time, Google also plans to do a testing in radiation resistance hardware, which means even if it's deployed in the space, it will be safe from the harsh conditions of the environment in the space. So why? Because it is meant to be radiation resistant. That's one very important highlight of this infrastructure by Google. Why are data centers suddenly being moved outside the planet? Why are so many tech giants looking at creating extraterrestrial or outside space data centers? Because ultimately the data centers are all about operational cost. Yes, you need more energy, you need more finance and shifting them outside the earth could mean much easier access to infrastructure that can be built in an area that shall be efficient and cheaper in the long run. AI driven data centers will consume massive amount of electricity and water. That is why they are heavily dependent on fossil fuels. That's the logic given by Google in shifting the data center outside the earth. At the same time, many thinkers and scientists are saying that the global data center power demand will also rise sharply by 2030. Now, what a coincidence. By 2030, the whole world will have an increased demand for data centers, data power centers. At the same time, 2030 is also the commitment that India has made towards its nationally determined contributions, which we are now planning to submit a fresh round of our NDCs. And we know that India commits to reducing its total carbon emission by 45%. As of 2030, we also know that India plans to become carbon neutral by 2070. In that case, if we are seeing an increased demand for data power center, it could mean we will have to compromise somewhere on our nationally determined contribution. To avoid that from happening, it's in best interest that these data centers be moved outside the planet so that then we can reduce our dependence on fossil fuel. In any case, we have seen. There are huge hurdles to India's transition to nuclear energy. One of them, of course, is expensive solar energy. The second is our increased dependence on coal. The high grid emission factor in India. All these together contribute to a high emission factor also. And now space can therefore be an uninterrupted solar energy platform. It could provide safety from natural disasters and freedom from undersea cable disruptions. We had seen the undersea cable disruption in the news big time when the Houthi rebels had actually created a kind of conflict, cutting so many undersea cables that impacted the provision of internet services in many regions, including India. So do remember, if you shift these data centers to space, at least you are protected, you are insulated by all these rogue episodes, environmental problems, or for that matter, conflict and civil wars. Now, data sovereignty concerns, however, are still existing. There is a big confusion about outer space. After all, under the Outer Space Treaty 1967, there are certain protocols to be followed. No country can single-handedly try to take sovereignty or control of any celestial body, any area in the space. Countries cannot have national ownership of celestial bodies. They cannot do that because all these are multilateral negotiations. You cannot claim your ownership on any space area, including the moon and many other celestial bodies. You can't do that. Similarly, under the Outer Space Treaty 1967, there is another protocol which regulates the way countries explore and use outer space area, whether it's moon, whether it's other bodies. It also prohibits the deployment of nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction in the orbit. You can't do that. So today, this plan by Google and many other companies is raising a question about that. That after all, how should we allow and how should we give licenses and permits to countries or companies to create their infrastructures in the space? Will this somewhere challenge the provisions of the Outer Space Treaty 1967? That's a big question that's being raised. Now, at the same time, there are more considerations for example, there is a consideration that if we create these data centers outside the planet, 
What about the cost behind it? Will the installation cost be easy? Will it be cheaper? Perhaps not. That's one question. At the same time, even if you construct a data center outside Earth, how will you maintain that in the long term? Who will provide for the repair? What about the real-time data transmission that could be impacted because of the long distance? All these continue to be valid concern. So until there is a proper cost mechanism and repair and safety mechanism, perhaps the idea is little far flung right now. Then cyber security in space based system also remains an unresolved concern. So although it looks like a very ambitious project, but right now there are certain big considerations that are looming large over such scenarios. So what opinion do you have regarding this? Do you think it could be a great alternative to shift an energy intensive infrastructure like data power center or solar power data center outside the earth into the outer space? If you have any opinion that's non-political UPSC relevant, do feel free to share it on our platform. Quickly, a practice question for you. With reference to Project Suncatcher and the emerging concept of space-based data center, look at these statements. One, Project Suncatcher proposes the deployment of satellite-based data center powered completely by solar energy equipped with specialized AI chips. Two, Optical laser links are intended to enable high-speed communication between satellites, allowing them to operate as a distributed computer network. And three, under the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, private corporations are permitted. They have the permit to claim ownership over celestial bodies for commercial data hosting purpose. Which among them do you think is or are valid? Let us know your response, but more than response, do share any opinion or any perspective that you have. A quick reminder, for those who are writing UPSC exam in 2026, few months are remaining now. The countdown has begun. And now we announce a thorough, aggressive training session for you in the form of Success in Prelims Initiative. This will train you for GS Paper 1, CSAT thoroughly. Also, current affairs, news, monthly, weekly revision and routine test. One-on-one -on -one mentorship and at the same time, thorough practice of PYQs. And if you are someone who is very keen on clearing the 26 prelims, then think about this great opportunity at only 5,499, that's it, which will enable you success in the upcoming prelims exam. Now, this is a limited period offer because prelims is just there now. So think of codes live. This is one click away. You can use the code and enroll for this excellent sale offer. At the same time, if you are writing UPSC 2027 at a price of only 12499 you get complete prelims, mains and interview guidance. Complete. And when I say complete, I mean books, materials, guidance, teaching, revision, everything. So if you are interested, use code SPLIVE, spread the word among your friends. Similar is true for UPSC 2028. At a very reduced price of 3999 you Get access to Prelims Complete Mains Coaching. So use code SPLY with a limited time offer and upgrade your performance to ensure your success only with us at Study IQ English. Thank you.